And you know how we were complaining how the Chinese would come and give you bribes and all that? Just so they could get a contract? They'll come with their God I must go box of Naira's and dollars and what have you? Guess what I mean it would do? And in fact, we, he's the one that's, that we have to thank for having the railways. The trains now are running in Nigeria, you know that. It's this young man, Dr. Aminu Guso. But when the Chinese were trying to bribe him to get those contracts, he threw them in jail. So he does not want substantive anything to come to our country. So please help me welcome Dr. Aminu Guso, who's going to um, just do a brief um, speech about Malam Ibrahim Magu and their office of EFCC. So why we kept the two best for last is we talked about investments, we talked about people doing business in Nigeria now. If somebody offends you, you can call EFCC on them. Right? And he can help you. Thank you very much, Emilia. But before I start, let me make a correction. The media said he was a diaspora. I am a diaspora. He left Nigeria April 1990 okay. to come to Kansas. Um, we're going, time is, seems to be against. However, I will still stay a little before going with the presentation of uh, Mr. Mau. When I came down, I literally, uh, the diasporans here, any diasporan, if he can tell you his life from a physiotherapist to become a doctor, from all these doctors, cardiologists, all this, is worth writing volumes of books. We know that. A lot of us have to go through what the real American life is all about where you see temptation, you keep away from it. You wash the toilets, you clean everywhere, you work at McDonald's, you work at other places to make ends meet. And you walk, you struggle, in spite of all the other families back home waiting for you, and yet, whether you call it miracle or what, I don't know, but we try the best to do that. That is what I see in what is called diaspora and I believe you all should be grateful that you have one of yours. Mr. Mabu, I came here on Thursday. I have my wife and daughter in Kansas. I would have taken but I know Mabu would be coming on Friday so I decided to come much earlier then we can go you know with my brothers you know to pick him up to show you that he was really committed. He was in Vienna. Money had been paid from there coming down here but he says, I have the people so there. And then, and honestly speaking, what Emilia says, no exaggeration. I work there in the railways as the director of administration and human resources. If you have any friend, anybody in the railway, ask them about the people so. I never change those cardinal principles we learned here. I never compromise who I am. You gotta pay the price. Of course, we keep on. You have a threshold. Once you pass that threshold, you're gone. Anyway, probably tomorrow I will say a lot that will really guide us for some of us who are really going. But all I can say is that I assure you that you should believe that you have brothers who are there. It's not easy to be there. It's not easy. But my sister in her presentation, she asked, you know, challenges and opportunities. Which one will you take? We said all opportunities. So opportunities are there, but we gotta be ready for that. So without wasting much time, um, an apology has been rendered already, and I'm rushing to finish the speech so that we can be able to show the video. That video, even if you are sleepy, it will wake you up. I assure you. Now, I don't know from what perspective would you see that video, but what I can tell you is that it's a video that will really show you the true situation of what Nigeria is all about. I'm sorry to say this. We are good people. At times, those good people were not given opportunities to do the right thing. And that's what we're fighting. To get to, to, to make 
those challenges. Get it. Never, you see, if you keep on saying until Nigeria get better, you go there. Until we all die, we'll like, you can't get better. <laughs> That's the end. I'm sure John Mongo is here. He can really attest to some of this. He's one of the great Nigerians. Only God knows what he has gone through to be able to bring, a, you know, a, such a very wonderful, you know, television that everyone, you know, is proud in Nigeria. Gentlemen, before I start, may I use this opportunity to thank Brother Ken and uh, the chairman, Afolabi, who they all went together to pick me up from the airport. I was so happy and I felt at home, uh, but I am just restating that Mago did not just change his mind. And honestly speaking, that man, I'm not here, people who know me, I can't come here and just sing songs to, of praises for him. That guy is a leader. My concern about Nigeria is that we keep on talking about the 21st century. How do we do business? We keep on saying this. Look at all the air. No airline in Nigeria that has a business model. I know she talked about business model. I was listening attentively. The professor. Yeah. How can you run planes when you cannot preserve, you know, or save money, you know, for maintenance? <laughs> then why is the business model? And when the money comes in, it's going for politics where it's going. That's why part of my PhD you know, though it's a business administration focused international business, but my dissertation has more to do in trying to understand the role of CEO leadership style in the growth and sustainability of aviation with particular interest to Nigerian commercial airlines. And something led me to do that in 2005-2006 when Sosoliso were crashing. So I was trying to identify, and any airline starting within months is gone. So I said, let me, let me scientifically understand what is actually going on. We'll talk more tomorrow, but give me, permit me to start reading word by word what Mabu has uh, drafted here and wanted me to come and say it before you. May I use this gracious opportunity to express my profound gratitude and appreciation to be part of this historic and important forum put together by the Nigerian American Business Forum. Your foresight, your patriotism, your vision, commitment, and dedication to your fatherland cannot be overemphasized. I commend you for your humanistic services to your host country, the United States, and your home country, Nigeria. Kindly allow me to say thank you for permitting me to speak on this important and vital topic, which, in my opinion, will capture the primary theme of our gathering today. The topic of discussion, as we all know, is entrepreneurship in Africa, challenges and opportunities. My presentation will focus on four main areas, and I share all this for a short, not going very deep because we were thinking about the video. One, understanding the concept of entrepreneurship and its role to national economic development. Two, the impact of corruption on entrepreneurship in Africa was particular reference to Nigeria. Three, how diaspora can assist the EFCC in fighting corruption in a dear country, Nigeria. Four, the protection of foreign investment as it relates to doing business in Nigeria and the general achievement of EFCC under my watch. It is inarguably clear that one of the major challenges in Africa has always been the entrenchment of good governance. Bad governance in this context has created a myriad of problems such as poverty, unemployment, social injustice, and other vices in our societies. All these are directly correlated and characterized by the mother of all evils, corruption. Factually speaking, the effect of corruption in Nigeria is precarious and cannot be overemphasized. However, the quest to change these narrative realities in the country gave birth to the establishment of the Financial and Economic, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission 
in 2003. Over the years, the EFCC has made significant contributions towards the eradication of corruption in order to create conducive environment for local and foreign direct investments in our country. Understanding the concept of entrepreneurship and its impact on economic development. To better understand the concept of entrepreneurship and its impact on economic development, let me begin by defining the term entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, according to most scholarly definitions, in this process, uh, is the process of planning, designing, and running a new business, which may be small in scope. On the other hand, the people who create these businesses are called entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are in business to make profit or even to maximize profits. However, there are ethical factors or standards that guide entrepreneurs in their business dealings. One of such ethical standards is the avoidance of corrupt practices in all its ramifications. Entrepreneurship has also been described as a capacity and willingness to develop, organize, and manage a business venture along with any of its risk in order to make a profit. Entrepreneurship is one of the significant predictors of development and is moderated by social, psychological, and economic forces. These forces are corruption prone and over the years have significantly marked entrepreneurship in Nigeria and Africa in general. Nigeria is blessed with abundant human and natural resources, which if properly harnessed, will have turned this country into a developed economy. Corruption has become a common phenomenon in many developing economies. There are different views on the effects of corruption on entrepreneurship. What is clear is that what is clear is that entrepreneurship is paramount for economic growth and development of any nation. Two, the impact of corruption on entrepreneurship in Africa with particular reference to Nigeria. The impact of corruption on entrepreneurship is huge and damaging. Corruption is a worldwide problem, and to no country of the world is entirely free of its menacing grip. It has gradually embedded into our political, economic, and social culture. Although corruption remains a global challenge to the quest for development and welfare, unfortunately, it is a recurring theme in the African discourse. It has affected many countries all over the world, especially the developing countries. The Nigerian scenario and experience provides a useful picture of the negativity surrounding corruption and how it interfaces with the state and the struggle for development and value reorientation. Nevertheless, the causes of corruption are interrelated, consisting of several factors that relate with institutional structures, civil liberties, governance, economic policies, and existing inequality among citizens. It is my view that with respect to Africa, the preponderance of weak state institutions and the absence of good governance in effective checks and balances, inadequate regulatory and legal frameworks and poor enforcement mechanism have combined to create a fertile ground for corruption to emerge and flourish. Entrepreneurship development is driven by a number of factors. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Entrepreneurship development is driven by a number of factors, principally social, psychological, and economic. All these factors are therefore pose a serious challenge to national development. One of the primary determinants of the wealth of a nation is entrepreneurship. The ability of a nation 
the ability of a nation's citizens and foreign investors to engage in building new businesses or in constructing existing establishments in order to adjust to changes in the economic and political environment is a hallmark of entrepreneurial development. Corruption drastically affects economic development by causing a misallocation and misappropriation of resources in terms of human, in terms of material, and in terms of information. What is damaging to an economy is that is the fact that it is endemically corrupt systems. Majority of the population are denied of public services, thus putting a strain on the social contract between citizens and political leaders. The lack of adequate public service also questions the legitimacy of constitutional functions of government. In a frantic fight for survival, people's ingenuity allows them to create their own systems to make ends meet, and in the process, carry out unethical actions detrimental to development. Theoretically, the payment of bribes to corrupt government bureaucrats to get favors can add to the cost of uncertainties of doing business in a country. Moreover, since bribery is illegal, potential investors cannot, cannot be certain that government promises will be fulfilled or may be concerned that doing business in such a country will harm their reputation. This means that corruption can decrease corruption can decrease the expected profitability of investment projects, including entrepreneurship itself, and therefore may reduce the total investment and entrepreneurship in such a country. In addition, when the business sector is afflicted with high levels of corruption, the prestige of being an entrepreneur or a leading business executive or an investor decreases. This may lead to a decrease in the number of entrepreneurs in the country or in the country. Corruption in Nigeria has deeply entrenched roots in the national ethics, politics, civil society, public and private sectors and has been deeply permeated by a pervasive debilitating culture so much that it is best regarded as seen institutionalized onto the recent aggressive fight against it. The long-term sovereignty of corruption in the country has impacted negatively on economic growth and has decayed and deteriorated, deteriorated our cultural values in Nigeria. The negative impact of corruption on economic growth and the decaying standard of Nigerian cultural values have necessitated value orientation in order to bring redemption to the country's image. The Nigerian government has therefore put in place several efforts to orientate Nigerians to imbibe the culture of virtue as well as shown immoral acts. The government has also implemented multi-pronged strategies to curb corruption in the country. For instance, the establishment of EFCC and other investigative agencies to check corruption in the country and to ensure ethical and immoral values are restored is a strong testimony. How diasporans can contribute in the fight against corruption in Nigeria. I make bold to state categorically that taming corruption is therefore the only way forward for Nigeria in its quest for economic development, political stability, and social justice. Fortunately, the task of fighting and taming corruption in Nigeria is being undertaken by anti-corruption agencies within the country and through collaboration with a number of international agencies. It will interest you to know that the EFCC plays a significant role in securing national investments, safeguarding the business environment, 
uh, protecting Nigeria's international reputation through the prevention and detection of economic and financial crimes to further buttress the role of Nigerians in diaspora in relation to national development, the Vice President of Nigeria's key not address in the first Diaspora Investment Summit held in November 2018 stated the following, and I quote, Our country's greatest resource is not its material resources, but its human resources. The abundant talent, ambitions, and energy of our people, qualities that we carry about with us everywhere we go in the world. Practically through the ages, nations and people have realized the immense potential and benefits in harnessing and utilizing the diaspora to drive national development. Considering that, Nigeria has won one of the most resilient, hardworking, intelligent and resourceful people in the diaspora. In every field of human endeavor, it would be very tragic if we failed to tap this immense potential. End of quote. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, I would like it. It is on the record that diasporans have remitted an average of 22 billion annually in the last two years through formal channels. This represents one of the highest remitters in the world by diasporans to their home countries. In light of the massive cash investment from diasporans, we have a vital role to play in helping in this great fight against corruption. For in the words of President Muhammadu Buhari, if we do not kill corruption, corruption will keep Nigeria. There is need for everyone to not only talk of corruption, but to honestly talk about anti-corruption and participate in actions that will mitigate corrupt practices such as engaging in whistleblowing or providing solutions and applications that can help to prevent or avoid even totally eradicate corruption. <coughs> you as diasporans that have been exposed to more advanced technology can collaborate with us in digitalizing applicable uh, processes so as to make them more transparent and less prone to manipulation. Diaspora voice must be heard because they are in the better position to contribute objective ideas due to virtual practical experiences in their host countries which can be adopted and domesticated. You must, you must lend your voice for genuine democratic change and anti-corruption reforms. I also wish to share with you that Nigeria's parliament is considerable whistleblower protection legislation. The Federal Executive Council has issued such laws authorizing financial rewards <coughs> for whistleblowers, and the results are already yielding huge returns for the state and the whistleblowers themselves. I must make a categorical appeal to the diaspora that under no circumstances, this is very important, under no circumstances should you aid or abet foreign business partners to undermine our anti-corruption laws and processes. Nor should you help looters hide their money abroad or help in illegitimate fronting arrangements. It is worthy to note that Nigeria has been the leading country in the international fight for asset recovery and has been most trampant in partial returns of the loot. Nigerians in diaspora can partner with the EFCC in designing successful templates that will help in addressing our inefficiencies in effectiveness and other issues that affect our general productive systems. This partnership will specifically aim at addressing major issues in Nigeria such as corruption. Thus, business leaders in Nigeria and the diaspora need to address and possibly initiate effective ways on how best to overcome these problems for Nigeria to grow and thrive. To say the least, the business industry in Nigeria requires major organizational and institutional transformational change. 
However, change is an uncontrollable environmental dynamic to which organizations must adapt to sustain their competitive advantage and remain competitively relevant. Now, I have a minute because I'm getting signals here after my brother has already given me yesterday and said it's your time. Oh, everything you say because this corruption is one that will create confidence. And this guy is here, so I please and please please let me, I know we are putting you on the stress, but I'm still taking your watch yesterday. I even reduced this, please. Uh, let me, I'm just, I, I got only two sheets here, and then we can show. Okay, that, that's fine. We want to do that too. Unless if they say they want, but it's a very, very wonderful thing that you do. Oh, okay. oh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. The protection of foreign investors and general achievements of the ESC is under my watch. Now, what I'm going to reduce here, we have names of companies. I'm not going, we, we intend to share it with you, but I will reduce that. I won't do that. No, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. In the course of discharging its statutory mandate, EFCC has rendered tremendous assistance to a number of foreign investment companies. For instance, before I jump on this, there were Nigerians who were willing to invest. One particular case, somebody unfortunately was able to get or fell unfortunately to the hands of scammers and he put more than five he put more than five hundred billion and they were they told him there was a location in Lekki. That's right. It's public knowledge, go ahead. Yes, yes. In Lekki. And that person, to make no story short, found out that these people were not telling the truth. And Surprisingly, he talked to the police, and police contacted us. The chairman stood firm on that. All those culprits were apprehended. Can you help me with mine? <laughs> of course. <laughs> you have a, you have a, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that there are so many Nigerians who have been falling into trap, but. Your ability now, this vehicle we are using to know the EFCC and what they are doing, thank you very much. That will really, honestly speaking, will, will I can't say guarantee, but definitely will provide an avenue for comfort. 2015. To a Nigerian, to a Nigerian company with many affiliates, and I will share that with you, Aquila. Aquila Limited, Aquila Capital Limited, Aquila Asset Management Limited, Aquila Logistics Nigeria Limited, and Aquila Group Nigeria Limited. Where do you So probably the one person just keep on Aquila, Aquila, Aquila here. Yeah. This is a true story. Right now they're working on that. The investors further alleged that as at June 20, 2018, they were supposed to have received a substantial amount, that is, as returns of their investment, as agreed. But there was no sign of getting such returns. Hence, the investors became apprehensive and petitioned the Aquila Leasing Limited, which is the mother of all. <laughs> by extension with its affiliated companies to EFCC requesting the commission to effect an investigation into the matter. Particularly the allegation that Aquila Leasing diverted the funds it borrowed from the lenders to its affiliates for other activities other than utilize the funds for progressive purposes. I'm delighted to share with you that EFCC went into action and thus far more than two billion Naira has been recovered, and more will still be realized until every cobble is recovered. 
the commission remains relentless <coughs> and impervious in its anti-corruption efforts. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I use this medium to share with you my own modest achievements in 2018, to date as executive chairman of the EFCC. A, cash recoveries, last year to today. Cash recoveries, 794 billion, 500 million naira, 261 million dollars, 1 million, 100,000 pounds, 8 million, 100,000 euros, and 86,500 CMA francs. B, 314 convictions in 2018 alone, including conviction of two former state governors in May and June 2018, both of whom were sentenced to 14 years in jail. That was the former governor of Taraba State and the former governor of Plateau State. The conviction of a senior advocate of Nigeria for perverting the course of justice. The prosecution of former chairman of the Ogoro Ogori local, local government somewhere. Five convictions in January 2019. C. Seized 407 mansions. 281 of these were secured with interim for future orders, and 126 were secured with final for future orders. D. Confiscated hundreds of petroleum stations, petroleum products, real estate, heavy machineries, and invested shares. E. Seized 98 lands. 56 of these were secured with interim for future orders and 42 were secured with final for future orders. F. Seized 259 automobiles. 35 of these were secured with interim for future orders and 224 were secured using final for future. G. Juries worth millions of naira have been seized using entry for future orders. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, in this 21st century, thinking outside the box has two important components, creativity and innovation. In other words, we must find different ways to achieve results. I urge you all, as professionals in your respective fields, to be upright in all your dealings. Serve your country wholeheartedly and be representatives of your fatherland and your host countries as you have been doing. Our country will never attain its rightful place in the Committee of Nations, if we allow our destiny to be just jeopardized by looters who plunder government coffers with impunity. The ripple effect of our action or inaction today will come to bear not just on our children, but for the generations to come. Hence, the EFCC is committed to constantly collaborate with all stakeholders at home and abroad to review our strategies and counteract the ever-changing trends and dynamics of corruption. We must not allow corruption to destroy our cultural and ethical values. May God protect you all. Thank you for listening.
new Africa Broadcasting Network.